GP, we touched on it yesterday that week 17 in the NFL is going to be a wild one. And it's also going to have teams making decisions on who's in, who's out based off of where they stand in the playoff picture. And yesterday, Mike Tomlin announced that Ben Roethlisberger will not play against the Cleveland Browns. So Mason Rudolph steps in. They still want to win this game. There's still something on the line. Maybe the two seed they could steal from Buffalo. And a big reason that maybe they could still grab that with a win over Cleveland is the play of this defense for Pittsburgh that is led by T.J. Watt, who maybe have uh, some extraterrestrial uh, abilities. But Gary, as you look at this matchup with the Steelers and the Browns, it's all there for Cleveland. But Pittsburgh is going to come at this game with something to win as well beyond just getting that extra W in Week 17. To me, this is one of the uh, most important and most interesting games of the weekend. You, of course, are going to be there on the sideline for CBS Sports with the Browns having an opportunity to secure a playoff spot for the first time since 2002. Obviously, uh, they've got nine players on the COVID-19 reserve list right now. That's not ideal, but seven of them um, have a chance at least to be removed from that list by Sunday and actually get onto the field. Simply put, the Browns are 10-point favorites in a game at home with an opportunity to secure a playoff berth. Surely they can't screw this up. I know they can, and history says they might, uh, but if you are uh, not a Steelers fan, I would assume you're, you're probably rooting to, to see uh, history be made on Sunday in Cleveland. As you mentioned, being there in Cleveland, uh, I'm excited for this one. The main point is you just hope that Cleveland can come to this game with a semblance of their their 53-man roster and not be ravaged by COVID in close contacts because it, it would seem just cruel and unusual for them to be on the precipice of getting rid of this drought and have that stand in their way. But we'll find out in the coming days. The Ravens from Baltimore have won four straight, arguably the hottest team in the AFC. So love or loathe, they still got to do some work to get into the postseason, but say they get in, love or loathe the idea that they win a playoff game, something they haven't done in a while now. Yeah, I, I love this statement. I, I think they will win a playoff game, and it would be the first time since the uh, 2014 season, obviously last season losing to the Tennessee Titans. As you noted, it, it, they've got work to do to even get into the playoffs, but I think they will handle business on Sunday. Then it remains unclear exactly which opponent they would play, but if they win on Sunday, they're going to enter the playoffs on a five-game winning streak, and I would assume that they're going to be able to extend that to six. I love this idea. I'll jump in here since it's the NFL. When the Baltimore Ravens organization has made runs in the playoffs, they've had hardship at the middle of the year, which this team definitely did. They get hot at the right time and they make a run. And it feels like that momentum is building with this team. So I love the idea that they'll win a playoff game. It's the Rose Bowl, but it's being played in Texas, very 2020. It's Alabama and the Notre Dame fighting Irish. There's some ugly history here for Notre Dame. So take your pick. What do you have in it? I'll take Alabama against Notre Dame and anybody else. And poor Notre Dame a legit good football team that's going to end its season with consecutive blowout losses to Clemson and Alabama. They'll get mocked for it, but that just speaks to the gap between Alabama, Clemson, and basically everybody else in the sport. Couldn't agree more. This is a game Alabama will win. Notre Dame, it's another year where you're going to have to wait to try and avoid the Crimson Tide. Now to the Sugar Bowl, the other side of this college football playoff semifinal. And you mentioned it. You've got Clemson and Ohio State. They've got plenty of history as well. So take your pick here, Gary. Is it Clemson or Ohio State taking on Bama for the national championship? I think it'll be Clemson. The most interesting thing would be Ohio State upsetting Clemson after Davo Swinney, Clemson's coach, ranked Ohio State 11th on his coach's poll ballot. That's what I would root for, if only because it would be hilarious, but I don't see it going that way. Trevor Lawrence, now well aware he's going to be playing professional football in Jacksonville, will take out that frustration on these Buckeyes. I'm going to go the other way on this, and largely because of how you laid it out. I just love the idea that after all of this discussion and talk back and forth and subtle jabs and not-so-subtle jabs, that, that lack of a schedule just primed the Buckeyes to knock off Clemson. And uh, hey, it could happen. We're ready to shine on some sports. And let's start 
in the association where last night, GP, the Milwaukee Bucks went off. Three-pointers galore, setting records uh, uh, across the evening. And this is with Giannis really not being a big factor. Even our guy Sam Merrill from the Mountain West getting into the act. What did this show you about maybe the depth that this Bucks team has heading into this season? Well, first things first, is Jimmy Butler the most valuable player in the history of the world? Because he has to sit down with an ankle injury, and then the Heat lose by a billion to the Bucks. So the uh, margin of defeat for Miami is somewhat troubling. But for Milwaukee, you're exactly right. They just got going, and it came from everywhere except Giannis. Twelve different players made a three-pointer, 29 in the game. That's an NBA record. The only Buck who didn't make one but was also on the court to have a chance to make one was actually the two-time reigning MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. How often can you set an NBA record without your MVP contributing to that record in any way? So, yes, it does speak to the depth of Milwaukee, and it was a reminder that this is a team that is projected to win the East, and they certainly look like it against the Miami Heat. Staying in the NBA, Gary, the Celtics, an impressive 17-point comeback last night against the Indiana Pacers. Peyton Pritchard uh, making a name for himself. We know what Jason Tatum can do. What does a game like this, albeit early in the season, do for a Celtics team as they build confidence this year? Well, Brad Stevens winning in Indianapolis. I've seen that before in his days as the head coach at, at Butler. Um, it was a terrific uh, road victory for Boston, and you've got to think it does a lot for their confidence. Although it, it should be noted, coming back on the road, I think what we're going to find out in this unusual season is that it's not as difficult as it otherwise would be. You know, Normally, you know, you're a big brand like the Celtics. You're on the road in a place like Indiana. You go down 17. Banker's life is going to be going wild, crowd against you. There's a lot working against you. We just don't have that, again, in this season that we're playing in the middle of a pandemic. So I would assume it makes it easier to come back. Either way, Jason Tatum, another big performance. He was only 22 years old. He was an all-star last season. He is off to a great start this season, looking like he's going to be a perennial all-star. It's a great point. Home and road across sports here during a pandemic season has a very different meaning. Our collective time to shine brain power has come together and built our NBA DraftKings roster for tonight. A full squad of A players while staying under the 50,000 salary cap looks like this. Highlighted by Luka Doncic, Bam at a bio there at center. Sprinkle in some DeMar DeRozan, Yusuf Nurkic, Gary, what do we think of this roster? I, I, I know you're a college guy, but you're an NBA head as well. How do you feel about what we've built here for the evening? Well, you don't have to know much about basketball or anything to know that starting any team with Luka Doncic is probably a positive. I would say, you know, since we spoke yesterday, we found out that John Morant is going to be sidelined for the Grizzlies for several weeks with an ankle injury. Jaron Jackson Jr. already out. Justice Winslow already out. The Grizzlies are at the Celtics tonight. Somebody has to score. Dylan Brooks is already averaging 20 points per game with John Morant playing beside him. He's going to get all the shots he's ever wanted in his life, and he loves taking shots. I might take a flyer on Dylan Brooks because, again, somebody's got to score for that Grizzlies team. I like our roster, but GP's always going to bring it for his Memphis group. He's our Memphis insider. Basketball is back. DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports, is putting you in the center of tonight's action with a shot at over $1 million in prizes. Just download the DraftKings app before tip-off and sign up using the promo code SHINE. So, Gary, that leads us to a Wednesday edition of Love or Low. Denver Nuggets star center Nikola Jokic has a triple-double in three of the Nuggets' first four games. So, love or low, GP, the idea that Jokic could average a triple-double this season. I love it. I mean, he's averaging one right now, and he's been averaging a double-double for years, so points and rebounds shouldn't be a problem. The only question is assist, and right now, you know, he's gotten at least 10 assists in every game he's played this season, so there's not like this one fluky outlier performance that's skewing the numbers. He's gotten double-digit assists in every single game, so sure, um, I think it's possible that he can average a triple-double for the season because He's just a, a special and unique talent. Not bad for a former second-round pick. 
Uh, to college hoops, where we have a marquee SEC matchup of unbeatens between Tennessee and Missouri. So, Gary, love or loathe, Missouri will hand Tennessee their first loss of the season. I, I loathe that. I, I think it's possible, but you know, Tennessee is really good. My preseason pick to win the SEC, they've just been off of people's radar for the most part because their season was delayed. They started late because of COVID-19 issues within the program, including with head coach Rick Barnes, and they haven't played a ranked opponent yet. So they haven't had this big signature game um, on the schedule, but they get one tonight in a, a situation where it is Conzo Martin at Missouri coaching against uh, the Tennessee program that he used to run. Again, uh, I won't be shocked if Missouri wins the game, but Tennessee has got an experienced core highlighted by John Fulkerson. They've got three former five-star high school recruits on the roster, two five-star freshmen, both of whom are projected one and done first round picks. Again, the Tennessee's been off people's radar, but uh, I, I think that changes tonight. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.